Adding film grain to your footage to create filmic looking videos is not just a case of slapping a grain effect onto your clips. To get the best possible results, you'll want to use a film emulation plugin like Film Convert Nitrate that actually emulates popular film stocks like those from Kodak and Fujifilm. That is what this video is all about. We'll get into Final Cut Pro in just a sec and I'll explain how to add film grain and how to grade your footage using Film Convert Nitrate, but first I need to quickly explain how it works. Without getting too technical, every camera reproduces colors a little bit differently. And most cameras have different picture styles that you can shoot in, whether it be a log profile, a neutral Rec 709 profile, or something different like a Cine 4 profile like you would get on a Sony. Now, the people over at Film Convert have mapped each of these different picture styles from the different cameras to each of the different film stocks that are built into the plugin, which allows you to accurately match the colors and to emulate these film stocks. Also, stick around to find out how you could win Film Convert Nitrate for yourself. Let's go through how to use Film Convert Nitrate in Final Cut Pro. I've got this shot here that was shot on a Sony a7 III using an S-Log3 picture profile. And to add Film Convert Nitrate to the clip, I'm simply going to head over to my effects browser and you'll find it under the Film Emulation category. I'll double click on it to add it to my clip and then I'll hide this effects browser. Next, I'll click on this Film Convert button here to open the control panel. And this is where I'm going to adjust all of my settings. Film Convert Nitrate has a bunch of different camera profiles built into it. So if I click on make down here, you can see that I have all sorts of different cameras. So I'll go ahead and select Sony and you'll see I don't have an A6300 profile. I haven't installed that because I don't have a need for it, but I can go to the model and I can choose my model of Sony, which is the A7 Mark III. Next, I need to choose what color profile I shot in. And in this case, it was an S-Log3 profile, but you've also got options for Cine4 and the HLG profiles. So I'm going to go ahead and choose S-Log3. And now we're ready to go ahead and change these other settings. Your exposure, temperature, and tint sliders affect the shot before the film stock is applied. But let's go ahead and choose the film stock first because that might affect how we adjust these sliders up top. I'll click on this drop-down list and you can see we have a bunch of different options to choose from. I'll go through a couple of these to find one that I like. I might go with a Fujifilm Pro V100. That's a really nice warm looking film stock, so I'm going to stick with that. And now I'll come in and adjust my exposure. I want to darken the shot a little bit, and I might want to warm it up a little bit as well. Don't worry, a little bit later, I'm going to still bring in some of the detail in the sky and boost some of these darker areas. But for now, I think that's a pretty good start. You can also come in and adjust the film color. So that will determine how much of this orangey film look is introduced into the image versus what it looked like originally in terms of the color. And then your sin to PFE is basically your mix between the final effect here of the film stock and your original log footage. So you can go ahead and adjust that. It's sort of like a mix value, if you will. Normally I would keep this set to 100, but it's nice to have an option if I want to just reduce the effect of this slightly. Let's go ahead and have a look at the grain response next. So I'll drop that down and maybe I'll just minimize that so we can focus on this grain response. Here you can choose a couple of presets. What's really cool is you can go all the way to an eight millimeter or super eight millimeter film look, which gives your footage this really old looking feel. You can also fine tune this look if you want by unchecking this preset box and then changing the grain size if you want your grain to look really big. And your image softness here is what helps to make this footage look old. If I bring that all the way down, you can see I've still got my sharp looking footage but I've still got that Super 8 grainy look. Let's switch the presets back on here. You can also choose something like a Super 16 millimeter, which is a little bit less harsh in terms of the grain, but it's still got that softness. Again, you can uncheck that and make it sharp again if you like. But my favorite film size preset is the 35 millimeter full frame preset. It's a really nice pleasing looking grain, but I can still come into the grain size and tweak that a bit as well. You can adjust the grain strength which basically just makes it way more obvious. You can see here, I've pushed it all the way up just so you can get an idea of what that looks like. And I can also introduce color in the grain by increasing the grain saturation. 
If I do that, you can see how we now have little colored artifacts in the grain. If you can't see that so well, let me just quickly switch back to a super eight millimeter grain. You can see how we have different colors in the grain over there. And if I bring that all the way down here, we don't have that color in the grain. I'll go back to my 35 millimeter full frame preset and I'm going to just bring this grain strength down a little bit and I'm quite happy with the grain saturation set to the middle. Now the grain curve is something that's a really interesting feature because you can adjust how much grain you'll see in the blacks, shadows, mid-tones, highlights and the white areas of your shot. So for example you can see we've got quite a bit of grain here in the shadows and the mid-tones. It's actually quite obvious you can see it down here. If I boost it in the blacks and I boost the shadows you'll see how much more obvious this grain becomes. So I'm overdoing it now just so that you can see it but here you can really play around with the curve and fine tune the grain to your liking. We also don't really have much grain here in the sky, so I can boost the highlights and the whites a little bit, maybe even a little bit further, something like that. And now you'll see the grain in the sky a lot more clearly. Now that the grain is looking the way we want it to look, we can go ahead and color grade using the color wheels, curves and levels adjustments. So I'll hide this and I'll just open those up. I want to bring some more detail into the sky, so I'm going to drop those highlights a little bit just until we get some of those clouds coming back into the sky. And I'm probably going to boost the mid-tones just to offset the fact that this gets a little bit darker as well. You can also introduce some colors. So let's say in the highlights, I want to have a little bit more orange. So in the sky, I want it to be a little bit more orange. And in the shadows, I want to make it a bit cooler. So I'll bring it down to somewhere down here, like a bluish turquoisey sort of color. I've also got a saturation slider here in case I want to boost or reduce the saturation. I'll boost it a little bit just to bring out those colors and keep that feeling nice and warm. You've also got a curves adjustment so you can come in here and add some contrast if you prefer to work with curves. And you've also got a levels adjustment so you can come in here and adjust your black values. Maybe you'd like to darken it and you can affect your midtones. So you've got these color grading tools in here that you can use to adjust the colors and the exposure of the shot. And you can use one or the other or a combination of all of them to really dial in the color grade of your shot. Here is a quick before and after look at what we've just done with Film Convert Nitrate. You might be wondering, but what happens if the camera I'm using is not on the list of supported cameras? Well, firstly, you can submit a request to Film Convert to create a profile for that camera, but you can actually still get really good results even if you're using a different but similar profile. Let's quickly have a look at this clip, which was shot using the DJI Mavic Mini. I'll add the Film Convert Nitrate plugin to this clip, and then I'll open the control panel. I'll go ahead to make and I'll select DJI, model, and I don't see the Mavic Mini, which is what I use to shoot this clip. So instead, I'm going to just choose the Mavic Air. Under profile, we only have one option, so obviously I'll leave it like that. So let's go ahead and choose a film stock. I think I'll go with the Fujifilm H160S Pro. I really like the look of that straight out the box, but I might also just warm it up a little bit. Maybe something about there. I'll head over to my curves and I'll just create a little bit of contrast here between the shadows and the light areas. And just like that, I was able to still emulate the look of this Fujifilm film stock without having my exact camera profile. Aside from all the incredible features that are built into this plugin, one of my favorite features is the ability to create a LUT from the preset you created. Let's say I really like this look I've created and I want to apply it to other drone shots in this edit. I'll head over to the export LUT drop down menu and I'll select 64 cubed for the best quality. And I can rename that if I want. Maybe I want to call it drone LUT and then I'll click on save. Then you can add an adjustment layer over a bunch of drone clips and I'll go ahead to the color section in my effects browser and I'll drag a custom LUT effect onto this adjustment layer. Then I can simply go ahead and choose the custom LUT that we just exported and I'll open that LUT. That's a really easy way to apply this LUT to all your clips. The wonderful people over at Film Convert have agreed to give this amazing film emulation plugin away to three of you guys. So make sure you click on the link down below to enter and complete as many of the different entry actions as possible to better your chances. So Film Convert is running a Black Friday sale right now where you can save a massive 40%. But you'll have to be quick because the sale ends on November 29th. I'll leave a link down below for that as well if you'd like to check that out. As always, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and hit that bell icon and I'll see you in the next one.